Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Have you ever watched an indie film and thought to yourself, this doesn't look very indie to me? Well, there could be a very good reason for that. See, most indie films fall under one of two categories, what I like to call studio indie films and true indie films. And today, we're going to take a look at both. So grab your popcorn, sit back, and let's get started. Before we jump into the nitty gritty, let's quickly define what we mean by independent film. Often referred to as indies, these type of movies are produced outside the major film studio system. They are typically known for unique storytelling, unconventional narratives, and creative freedom that sets them apart from mainstream movies. Now, it's crucial to understand the differences between studio indie films and true indie films. This knowledge will give you a better appreciation for the diverse landscape of independent cinema. First up, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Budget and financing. Studio indie films usually have a budget ranging anywhere from $5 to $30 million. They have various financing sources, including studios, private investors, venture capitalists, government funding, and grants. On the other hand, true indie films operate on a shoestring budget, generally less than $1 million. Their financing sources include private investment, government funding, grants, self-financing, co-productions, crowdfunding, and smaller bank loans. To put that in perspective, let's compare a well-known studio indie, I picked Lost in Translation, with my latest feature, Spin the Wheel. Now, I could pick any number of well-known studio indies from Pulp Fiction to Little Miss Sunshine, but to me, Lost in Translation perfectly exemplifies a film made in the indie spirit, but still made within studio boundaries. It had a budget of around $4 million, coming primarily from pre-sales and licensing pre-distribution rights for overseas territories, while Spin the Wheel had to make do with a budget of around $25,000, which all came from private investment and self-financing. Let's face it, most studio films have a bigger coffee budget than that. Next up is the star power productions can bring to the table. When it comes to talent, studio indie films often attract mainstream actors from big movies and TV shows, anything from A-list talent to well-known rising stars. These actors are often guild members and can bring star power to the project. Because they have more money, they can afford more actors, more locations, and elaborate set pieces, and potentially more complex stories. In contrast, true indie films usually have fewer actors, which means the stories have to be told in simpler ways. This includes fewer locations and no-frill set pieces and costuming. With less money, these films feature lesser-known actors, non-union or guild members who are passionate about their craft, and are driven more for a desire to be part of a good production than a hefty paycheck. For example, my award-winning short Boneyard Racers had a tiny cast composed of relatively unknown actors working for nothing more than a chance to flex their creative muscles. As much as we would have loved to pay everyone who was part of the film, our non-existent budget of $500 barely covered feeding everyone who came out for a night of filmmaking fun. In contrast, Lost in Translation boasted Bill Murray, Scarlett Johansson, Giovanni Ribisi, and Anna Faris, not to mention its famous writer-director, Sofia Coppola. It doesn't get much bigger than this combination when it comes to indie film. And what are actors without a dedicated crew to make them look good? Studio indie films have highly skilled and experienced crew members, many of whom are union members in their respective fields. Due to larger budgets, they can afford a larger crew size, composed of people with years on big sets. On the other hand, true indie films work with a more diverse and often less experienced crew. These hardworking individuals may not be part of a union and often work for low pay due to budget constraints. Needless to say, true indie films generally have much smaller crew sizes. Lost in Translation, which was filmed on location in Japan, relied on key crew positions to be filled by Americans flown over, while the majority of crew were hired locally. This proved to be a challenge for the production, as most of the Japanese crew could not communicate with Coppola in English, so both sides relied on the bilingual assistant director and gaffer to translate. Much like with the cast, our small crew on Spin the Wheel, working for Peanuts, with a number of crew wearing multiple hats throughout. For example, our producer was also our gaffer and sound mixer, while I was writer and actor as well as co-director and co-editor. It was as much a testament to everyone's love for filmmaking as it was an opportunity to create something special with like-minded creatives. And therein lies the biggest difference. While those working on studio indies can be motivated by passion, critical acclaim, peer recognition, and a paycheck, their counterparts in true indie usually do it solely for the love of the game, as their performances don't typically have the same reach. Studio indie films have access to bigger distribution channels and are more likely to have theatrical releases. 
They often secure minimum guarantees or pre-sales from distributors, giving them financial stability. For example, Coppola sold the domestic distribution rights for Lost in Translation to Focus Features for a reported $4 million, and had a successful theatrical run culminating in almost $120 million at the box office. On the other hand, true indie films face a more uncertain distribution landscape. Theatrical showings are less likely, and there are no guarantees from distributors. For Boneyard Racers, we managed to get a worldwide distribution deal through Shorts TV, but there were no guarantees of any kind, no back-end payments or residuals, and only a small one-time payment that didn't even cover the cost of production. But you know what? We felt lucky nonetheless to have a platform to share our small film with the world. Ah, film festivals. They play a crucial role in promoting independent films. Studio indie films have a higher likelihood of acceptance due to their star power and existing relationships with festival organizers. With its pedigree, Lost in Translation got into big film festivals pretty easily. Premiering at Telluride, it quickly followed suit with screenings at Venice and TIFF, not to mention a slew of awards from BAFTA, Golden Globes, Indie Spirit Awards, New York Film Critics Circle, LA Film Critics Association, and many others, not to mention an Oscar nomination for Bill Murray and a win for Best Original Screenplay. However, true indie films face stricter criteria in larger and mid-sized festivals. Their acceptance these days tends to be based partly on the content of the film and as much on socio-political trends and the demographics of the filmmakers. Some festivals even have checklists for the filmmakers to fill out, identifying everything from their race to sexual orientation as part of the submission process. Though most claim that the answers have no bearing whatsoever on the selection process, even if they are asked before the selection and not afterwards. Next, let's talk about marketing. Studio indie films often have professional firms handling their marketing efforts. They run targeted advertising campaigns and strategic social media promotions. Lost in Translation relied on advanced press screenings, magazine publicity, and a successful film festival run to mount an indie-style campaign. It's noted that it avoided pricey TV advertising in an effort to keep costs low, and were it to be released today, would employ a hefty social media strategy to further increase visibility of the film. On the flip side, true indie films rely heavily on self-marketing efforts. They engage with social media, network with their communities, and rely on grassroots methods and good old-fashioned word of mouth. Though Spin the Wheel has yet to be released to the public, this is the style of campaign we plan on using for maximum exposure on a minimum budget. Now, creative control is an essential aspect of any filmmaking process. In studio indie films, filmmakers often have limited control over their projects. Decisions are influenced by focus groups, test screenings, marketing departments, producers, and studio executives. Lost in Translation is one of the few exceptions, as Coppola leveraged overseas distribution rights in order to maintain creative control. I didn't want to make something I'd have to change, Coppola said. I had an idea of what I wanted to make, and I wanted not to have a boss. It's hard to get final cut, but it was very important to me to have the freedom to do the film the way I wanted. This is rare. And it's more often the case that in true indie films, filmmakers enjoy greater autonomy. They have ownership of their intellectual property and make critical decisions themselves. As the key creatives, our core team had final say on every facet of Spin the Wheel, from the script to the music to the direction to the final cut. In every way, it's a reflection of us as a team. But more than that, it's all about preserving our artistic vision. As we wrap up this discussion, it's important to recognize the value of both studio indie films and true indie films in the film industry. Each brings unique perspectives, innovative storytelling, and diverse voices to the big screen. Indie filmmakers often start small, but their passion and dedication can lead to incredible achievements. So whether you dream of making a studio indie film or staying true to the indie spirit, remember that filmmaking is a journey. Embrace the challenges, celebrate the victories, and never stop honing your craft. And remember, success in the film industry is not just about box office numbers or recognition. It's about the impact your stories have on audiences and the connections you create through your art. Well, that's it for me, my fellow cinephiles. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have any questions or want to share your own indie film experiences, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel for more filmmaking insights, and hit that notification bell to stay updated with the latest content. Until next time, stay creative.